What's up, family? It's Professor T back for some more reacting to undiscovered musicians. And this is a redo. And I'm actually glad I'm redoing these because it gave me a time to have a cooler head and let it soak in a little bit more. So right now we're still doing Friends and Family Week. Woohoo! If I wasn't lazy, I would actually edit in some special effects on that part. <laughs> but right now we're doing another esteemed colleague of mine. This is Joe Kaplan, or as I call him, Joe Cap. And this is his project, Personal Blend. So this is like a, a kind of a Caribbean um, theme group. And they're based in Rochester, New York. Shout out to Rochester. And this is a track that was submitted, Midnight Rendezvous. So this actually looks like it came out last year. And um, we're going to review this one together. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. And we're going to play this, play it on out. I like that setting too. What's up with the bass player's facial expressions all the time though back there? And the horns came in real nice, real smooth. There's a lot of nice layers to this song too. I wonder, is this like a live performance? Like they're performing this. So when I listened to this the first time, and listened to this a few more times, his lyrical style is definitely very Caribbean influenced. Like you can totally hear that. Like I mean, it's like there's a lot of like references to like spiritual things there. Like there's a lot of like the, you know things of the afterlife and the spirit realm and things like that. That's ex that's prevalent in a lot of. Uh, Caribbean music, which is really cool that he incorporates that in there. Something that's, that I actually have talked to him about this before. The thing about how he kind of he tries to add like that Caribbean accent to it. Um, we talked about that. I think it's interesting. It kind of hit his take on it is that. It fits with the music to do it that way, because it's kind of like with jazz, you play it with swing, you sing this music with that, with the accent. But he says you could definitely overdo it. So, you know, that's the thing, you know, as long as like, it's, you know, you keep it respectful, kind of, was when we were talking about that. As long as you keep it respectful with doing the accent, you don't get carried away with it. To a point where it's like disrespectful. Music too, you hear the bass is mixed pretty loud in, in the mix, I like that. I like the horns in there, and like the, the rhythm guitar is in there pretty nice too, I like that. Joe Cap is a good performer, there's no, I guess no surprise, there's no question on if he was going to do his thing. But man, he's bringing it with this song though. No, I'm not gonna critique the horn players because they're <laughs> people though I'm a horn player too. That was my first and primary instrument. The horns, they sound good, so I gotta give it to them. Nice guitar solo.
the band is pretty tight to be able to do those little stops like that. That's not easy to do. So yeah, that was well done. Shout out to Joe Cat. Good work, guys. So my reaction to that one. You guys, my reaction real quick. Um, I like this song. It's very soothing. It's really rela re yeah, soothing and relaxing. That was the words I was going to say. And the Caribbean uh, feel, it was definitely there. And I like how it, the way that it was performed with the guitars and whatnot, it made it kind of like have like a rock, like a ska kind of a feel is what I would say. It made it kind of lean towards like a ska kind of, if, uh, of a feel. And I like that. That's cool. The vocal performance of it, I like it. I like the lyricism and all of that. This is really cool. Wherever y'all were recording this at, was that one of your homies' house? Because it is. That's a nice crib. I'm jealous. Where, I mean, how come I cannot have a crib like that? Look at my place. No, I was just playing. My place, this is my humble abode. It is beautiful. Three rooms of beautiful, classic uh, farmhouse. So critiques, because this is an educational channel. So the critiques for this one are not many because this is an excellent song. I had to really think if I could give any constructive criticism. So uh, I always usually just take the cop out of saying something about the vocal performance. So I guess I'll go there uh, with this one. Very well done. However, if I were to add any critiques to make it better, I would say for the lyrical style that you do, there's a lot of words to it. You know, and I mean, that's a good thing. That's the type of music that this is. There's a lot of words and it's very inspired um, lyricism. But what I was going to say about that, sometimes I notice because it goes kind of fast, sometimes I kind of lose some of the words. So I was just saying maybe with that, maybe um, just with the performance of them, maybe kind of sometimes you got to spit those words out a little bit faster. You know what I mean? So. I would say maybe do that with the speech intelligibility. And then I think this looked like it was live. So probably if I heard like the studio recording of it, it might be slightly different. But the only other thing I was going to say with that, and I commented on this on the Hearts Don't Lie uh, song that I reacted to in their music. Sometimes with the phrasing on this kind of music, it's tough because it's kind of, it's different than what we're trained on in school when we're learning how to uh, sing. The reason I comment on the singing a lot is because I've been studying a lot of singing recently because I suck and I've been trying to get better. So I've been getting a lot of advice and lessons and um, it's made me listen to other people singing in a different way. So that's the reason why I would say that, you know, just with some of the phrasing sometimes, you know, just like when I'm playing like my horns back in the day and now that I'm getting back into it, I'm healed from my uh, facial injury that I had. Uh, you have to consider the phrasing of like what... What notes do you connect together in one breath? And, and how do you, not just with, for the practical reason, but also artistic reason with the phrasing of what point gets louder, what point gets quieter, what notes are connected together in one phrase. So you do pretty good with that, but I would just say like for this particular song and recording, there's like maybe one or two spots where that's the only critique that I, could, that I would have to it. And that could have been slightly better. With the instruments, everything sounded great. Everybody obviously is a good player in this band. Everything sounded real crispy, real tight, real together. Um, maybe with the mix, I'll comment on the mix a little bit. I felt like the mix, it sounded a little boxy to me. So I would just say with the mix, maybe you guys could have um, like made it a little bit. But then again, it also could be YouTube's compression, to be fair. But I would say with the mix though anyway, so I'll still critique this because I feel like part of it is still helpful. Like if I were to listen to it on a title or something like that. But the mix, you could have made it a little bit more. Um, it seems like there's just a lot of mid-range in it. For what I mean when I say something is boxy. And sometimes that makes things get, kind of get washed out and all the instruments go together a little bit. So that's what I would say. Like in the mix, once again, I think this was live. So the mixing, it could have just been... Y'all said it right before you hit record on the camera. So it sounded good for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it sounded bad. I'm just saying like for a critique of it to make it Billboard number one, BET and MTV. That's why I would say is for the mix, make it maybe adjust that a little bit. Take out some of the mid range for some of the instruments, especially when you're dealing with guitars. Because guitars, they eat a lot of bandwidth in the mix because the guitars have a lot of range of sounds that they make. So... 
that's the only critique that I have to it is just to do that so I can hear the separation of all the instruments a little better. So now I'm actually going to cut to past Professor T and he's going to break down the uh, Professor T official billboard charts. I have something new. I got something fly and new. This Professor T review part two. It's time to get funky, funky. Everybody clap your hands. Because we got the Professor T leaderboards. So now I'm going to bring it over. Bring it back to life. Back to reality. The Professor T leaderboards. I'm excited about this. So first, there's an explanation in order here. I apologize that this looks ugly. I'm still figuring this part out, how to accomplish this in a more pretty and visually engaging way. But just bear with me while I'm getting this figured out. It seems impossible to, to um, get Tear Maker to do exactly how I want it to do. And not many other things look pretty and do this. So we're using a spreadsheet. I'm just keeping it real. So let's explain the order now since this is new. I got to give you guys the breakdown of the order of the previous videos of what I liked and how it ranks. Once again, this ranking is nothing personal. It's not to say that anybody's is worse than somebody else's. It's to say this is the top of what I like and where do I rank it in comparison to my personal preference to other songs I've done on this review series in, a, in order. So I always say that I hope that everybody can be grown adults about this and realize that this is just my opinion of what I like to listen to the most and your opinion might differ. But like I said, I just got to put that out there because I know some people, they, they go to Drake mode, they get in their feelings, they go, I'm upset, got a million on my head of disrespect. So let's, after I got that out the way, let's go through. We're going to go from the bottom to the top. Rounding at the bottom at 16, the, the homies over there, the Faith Quinn, King of a Thousand Skies. What I like slightly more than that, I like Kiki Life. What I like slightly more than that was Lucky on My Way. You remember, that was like the, the first video I did where I got mad. So they're lucky that they're not at the bottom. They should be, but I'm just going to be honest, because of my preference, I thought because it was so bad, I thought there was at least a little bit more entertainment factor because it wasn't very good that bumped it up above those two. 33 Dogs, Mr. Lion. That one, it was kind of a sleepy Saturday upload. So that one there is at the bottom because it's a little bit slower. I like faster paced songs. BT, for real. This one, it's, it's towards the bottom. It, I... You know, this is not sexism, the reason why, if you know this, BT, for real, a female rapper, and Kiki Life, a female rapper at the bottom, is not sexism. I just wasn't feeling their songs, and um, hopefully that will change soon. Hopefully I get some more female rappers and some more songs, You get some more better representation. So let me hear some, some more female rappers. Unless, again, there's no disrespect to them, it's just simply... I haven't gone back to their song. I wasn't feeling it as much as what's high on the list. The Brass Machine, I Think I Love You. You know, the jazz group, brass cover. Something just relaxing. Corey James, Dreaming, ranking slightly above the Brass Machines. Uh, Corey James, another real smooth, real relaxed song. Still towards the bottom. Then, but just barely cracking the top 10 for now. Ty P, Reply. Just barely cracking the top 10 at number 9. A rap song, New York City rapper. Vocals, X, Jason Alessi. Walk the Line. I uh, actually was feeling that song. It's a little bit low. In fact, I'm going to bump it up here because we can. I'm going to bump this up. I actually, no disrespect to, whoops, I didn't do it right. No disrespect to my boy J.A. Wild. I like yours, but I got to be honest about it. I think I like Vocals. Slightly more than yours. So J.A. Wild, West Coast rapper. Hearts Don't Lie, rock group from Drew Sizzle. You just saw that this week. I Needed You. I like that song. The top five. 
this is going to eventually expand to the top 10. But since we haven't done that many right now, I'm just keeping it at the top five. And at the end of the year, the top 10 songs are going to get an extra special shout out end of the year video. And I'm going to do a little over the top extra something special for all the people that were in the top 10 at the end of the year. For right now, though, it's just the top five. And the people that have that distinguished honor, the songs I was really, really feeling, we got Botica with The Water. I've loved that song. It's been stuck in my head. So relaxing, so smooth. Henrik, Stressed Out, I love this song too. Another one that's been stuck in my head. I love that track and I'm so happy to see that, you know, he's getting his views up. He's getting some popularity on social media. Good for him. Number three, Draco, produced by King Girl, Extra Freestyle. My, my homies from across the pond, from England, rapping, spitting some bars. It was very energetic. I enjoyed it. And I've been going back to their uh, YouTube channel. I like what they're doing over there. I like hearing rappers and, you know, different people from different countries. Number two, Kajera, I Don't Mind. That was the rock song uh, from last week, I believe. That was another excellent track. So that one is number two right now. What could place over Kajera? Geek and Taylor Jones back to love. I was dancing dang there through the whole video. So you already knew there was no way that couldn't be number one. So we're going to have to see now. Because that one, I haven't danced through the entire video yet on another track. So we're going to have to wait and see. Maybe somebody towards the end can out place Geek and Taylor Jones back to love. Maybe a female rapper so y'all can get down from the bottom of my list and up to the top. I got to hear some more female rappers. Maybe one of y'all will make that heat. So without any further ado, we're going to enter in the homie Joe Cap Personal Blend. What was the name of the track again? I already forgot. Midnight Rendezvous. I probably messed up the spelling of that. So, where does it rank? Bomb. Yay, it ranks at number seven. That's pretty high up, my boy Joe. So I so yeah, man, if you see this, you made it up there pretty high, my boy. Number seven. That's up there, man. So these are gonna slide around as the year goes on and we do more and more of these. So we're gonna see. Are you gonna still be in the top ten at the end of the year, my boy? I got a feeling you were. Because you brought it with this song and you never know, maybe it might be another one. And the same thing for everybody else that's on this list that's low right now. Don't feel bad. This is the beginning of the year. There's only 17 songs out here. There's going to be a lot more than that at the end of the year. And anybody that's like down there lower than number 10, do not be offended. As that year goes on, I know for a fact I'm going to have songs submitted to me that are going to be trash. And y'all are going to be way higher in the rankings comparatively. So do not feel offended. Also, you will get a second chance because this is a daily series. If anybody that's low on the list because I wasn't feeling it, like Lucky on my way. Like I said, that one is higher than Kiki and Faith Quinn's songs just because it was so bad it entertained me. So Lucky, I have a feeling that that's going to be sliding way down there. <laughs> but you never know. So, but what I was about to say, though, before I said that, Faith Quinn, Kiki, Lucky, 33 Dogs, BT, all of y'all, Corey James, all of y'all, if you have new stuff that comes out toward the end of the year and I come back and check it, or if y'all come and cap in upon one of these videos and see that, and you have something new submitted to me, because you can have a, cho a chance to get up to the top of that list, too. So, this was the first time we brought in a list, so that's the reason why this was super long-winded. I had to explain the list to you guys, so that's the list. So, I'm going to do my outro here, just in case past Professor T didn't do it. So, to Joe Cat, to Personal Blend, and to all of you watching at home, I love what you do. 
I enjoyed listening to this, and I hope that all of you did too. And I wish peace and love to all of you. And I'll see you on the next one.